Well, cool, man. I'm excited to talk to you. You got your upcoming uh, virtual gala fundraiser on June 3rd. Uh, before we get into that, uh, you're one of the board of directors for the National Puerto Rican Day Parade. It's coming up on their 64th year. That's amazing. Can you tell us a little about the history about the parade and how it got started before we get into the, the gala? Sure, sure. Yeah, as, as you uh, just well said, it was founded uh, officially around 1958 was the first one. Uh, the mm -hmm. interesting thing is that shortly before that, um, the, the Puerto Rican flag, believe it or not, was illegal to fly in the U.S. Uh, for several years leading up to that. Yeah, it was well, part of it, um, it's a territory. Why? <laughs> you know? Well, because at the time, again, this is history. You know, the U.S. Yeah. was trying to, let's say, impose uh, American uh, culture, American icons, tradition, what have you. Uh, and two of those things that they were trying to impose was the American flag. Uh, and was English, right? So like my grandmother's eighth grade diploma, um, you know, she, she, she studied at a school out in the, in the countryside and all the families there all spoke Spanish, nobody spoke English. And yet the only words in Spanish on her, high, on her eighth grade diploma were the names, everything else was in English. And so that just is a sort of a little snapshot of, of, of what the US back then was trying to impose. Wow. And so they had actually made it illegal to fly the flag for several years. Um, and so in 19, I think it was 1957 or right around that time frame that that um, that ban was lifted. And uh, that's partly why you see the flag, just these seas of flags and why Puerto Ricans just have so much, um, you know, uh, adoration and respect and, and, and reverence for the flag. Um, you know, so that's all historical. It, it, it is very much pride driven, but it's also, yeah. I believe, stems from, from that, from not having being able to do that. That's very um, interesting. Wow. Yeah. 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 Um, and then the other is that, that, you know, just another little bit of trivia. Mm -hmm. um, and, and when it did come back, when they did allow, the US actually had Puerto Rico change the color blue. So if you've ever seen, or if any of your you know, uh, listeners, viewers have ever seen, wondered why are there sometimes two different colors of blue in the Puerto Rican flag, one that's lighter and one that's darker. The original Puerto Rican flag was sort of modeled after the Cuban flag. Um, and you notice that the Cuban, the stripes of the Cuban flag are lighter blue. And, and then the Puerto Rican flag is sort of the, the reverse of it where the blue is in the field and the stripes are red but it, the original one was the lighter blue and oh. the Americans imposed a darker blue. And to so try to now, match the American flag, I guess, or why match, is it? match okay. the American flag, exactly. Wow. Um, so that's something that, uh, you know, a lot of people don't know, but these are yeah, some no idea. People, <laughs> the parade, the parade is the opportunity to sort of, you know, teach and, and inform on these types of things, particularly mm -hmm. with Puerto Ricans in our history, because a lot of that stuff isn't really well known. You know? Yeah, I, I, I love, I consider myself a history buff and I had no idea. That's, that's pretty cool. Thank you for educating me. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, is there any other fun facts I should know about or anything like uh, that? Yeah, I mean, I guess the other genesis of it was uh, here in New York City, you know, that was sort of the height, the 19, late 1950s was sort of the, 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 the height of the, the, the in, influx of Puerto Ricans coming from the island. Um, and, uh, but yet the Puerto Rican community here experienced a lot of, um, you know, second class citizenship treatment, you know, treatment in terms of second class citizens, uh, a lot of racism. I will tell you, I did not grow up in, in, in New York. I've lived here now for about 20 odd years, but I grew up in, in another Puerto Rican community outside of Cleveland, Ohio. That mm -hmm. community has similar history uh, going all the way back into the forties. Um, and in both cases, and in many other, in, meaning New York and in Cleveland, and in other uh, parts of the diaspora, you know, there was what was called a Puerto Rican problem, right? This influx of Puerto Ricans was a problem for many of these. So similar to the anti-immigrant sentiment that you see happening now, Puerto Ricans mm -hmm. experienced that back then, even though technically we were U.S. citizens and not immigrants. 
Um, yeah, and, exactly. And that's, so, why, that's why I'm shocked by learning all about this because no, I mean, no, yeah, it's, 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 it's been a territory, and you know, there's been a growing movement for a long time that it should be a state. I, I feel like that in Washington D.C. should be states. We should have 52 well, states. So, one, you know. one would think. One would think. Yeah. But you know, it, it, and and you know, like so much that we're experiencing now as as a country and as a society, as a global society, some uh, of these yeah. issues that you thought were solved and done a long time ago, you're seeing them just rear, rear their ugly heads. About back up we saw the second class citizenship happen with puerto rico just after maria where we got very if it wasn't for the diaspora and and other allies throughout um the country and honestly throughout the world you know we're the ones that helped bring some change and aid really aid to puerto rico because you know the federal government was just and and in some cases even the local puerto rican government were just completely inept to try and help their, the, the people there after having suffered so much and that's what led to the death toll that that uh, unfortunately had mounted. Uh, it wasn't necessarily because of the hurricane itself. It was because of the aftermath and not being able to get what the, the, the they needed. But anyways, I digress. Go back yeah, to the no. parade. The parade, um, you know, because of the second class citizenship and the Puerto Rican problem that existed back in the 50s, this was the community's way of showing the best of who we are and who we were back then, but who we still continue to be. So people donned their, their Sunday best and they went out onto Fifth Avenue and they had a parade uh, to show um, exactly who we are. And that tradition has you know, con consistently been there. Granted, you know, uh, the, the apparel may have changed to you know, more um, casual summer apparel, but the music and the glory and the flags and, and just the fanaticism by Puerto Ricans and, you know, lots of other people across New York um, is still very much alive. So that's sort of just the history, you know, of the 64 years. Yeah, very fascinating. Thank you. Uh, and so we got the virtual gala fundraiser coming up. Uh, I guess the fundraiser has been around for a while and, and I guess it explains the scholarships it, uh, it gives out to yeah, so so I'm not sure exactly what year um, the the scholarship program was founded because I, I joined the board in 2014, um, okay. uh, but ever since 2014, you know, uh, we have actually incremented and expanded the scholarship program. Back in the prior year, 2013, that parade board had awarded. Uh, God, let me think about this. It was fifteen thousand dollars in scholarships to five individuals. Um, and then we immediately said, you know what, that we need to expand it. So the first year we gave out 30, we doubled it. The next year we doubled it again to 60. The next year uh, we then eventually got up to 100 scholarships, I think in 2017. And since 2014, this parade board, of which now I oversee, uh, you know, or, or I'm the chair, uh, we've given out, this year we'll give out $1.2 million in total since 2014 in scholarships. That's awesome. This year, it's 100 students. In the last five years, it's been 100 students that receive scholarships. Um, and so the fundraising, the gala and other fundraising is what benefits that. Cool. Um, so that's the, the virtual one's going to take place on June 3rd. You got some fun special guests lined up for that. Right. I guess go through everything that's going to be happening on, on it. Sure. So the, the the grand marshals for this year's parade, and again, it's it's mostly a TV broadcast. There's no procession that's going to happen up Fifth, Fifth Avenue, uh, but it's a two hour TV program that's going to be on ABC Seven on June thirteenth. Um, as part of that whole ceremony, we have announced that the the grand marshals of this year will be the cast of In the Heights. Uh, you probably, if you've heard of it, if anybody's been oh yeah, I've seen a lot of ads it. for it. Looks great. <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, there's a couple of very special things about the movie, about the film. One is that it is one of the very few movies, particularly in a long time since the 90s, that's primarily an all Latino cast, uh, of which several Puerto Ricans play prominent roles. Anthony Ramos, uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda, Jimmy Smith, uh, Gregory Diaz, they're all Puerto Rican, they're all in the film, but they all have important roles. And not to mention that obviously Lin-Manuel is one of the creators as is Kiara Alegria Judes, who people might not be as uh, uh, know as well, but she is she authored the book in the Heights, and she did the helped uh, worked with Lynn for the Broadway adaptation as well as the screenplay that were of the movie that we're about to see. Um, so that's why we named them uh, Grand Marshals, and all of those individuals will actually be participating in the virtual gala 
in a panel discussion that will be moderated by Sunny Hostin, another Puerto Rican, uh, from The View, ABC's The View. Uh, and they'll you know, reminisce about what it was like to be growing up Puerto Rican, particularly in New York City, uh, you know, their memories, what it means to them for tradition and uh, to be able to pass down legacy and, and, and culture. And then also, you know, any challenges we may have confronted is like I just mentioned, right? Um, yeah. To help, uh, you know, our youth and our scholars be able to, to, to be better prepared to confront the world and, and just, you know, um, knock, knock, knock everything out of the park that they do. So um, that's what it's going to be fun. We will also have a cooking demonstration from a chef in Puerto Rico. His name is Ventura Vavoni. He's a pretty acclaimed chef there in Puerto Rico. He's yeah. going to be walking us through one of his signature dishes um, called arroz chuleria. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll cook along with that. Everybody, all the ticket holders will be receiving a meal kit with brands from Puerto Rico that are all the ingredients required to make the dish. Uh, and that's part of our way of trying to help uh, foster, you know, and support new biz uh, small businesses in Puerto Rico. So it should be pretty sure. fun. Yeah. So uh, you have to buy a ticket to attend, or you just kind yes. of go online. Okay. No, yeah, yeah. If you go to the if you go to the parade website, there's a gala page. The website just uh, to, so I can get it off, uh, you know, to get it out there. NPRDP Inc. So that stands for National Puerto Rican Day Parade Inc. dot org. Uh, we have a gala page um, where that has the Eventbrite link to be able to purchase tickets. They're $125, but the good thing this year is that since it's virtual and fashion, that one ticket is good for an entire household. So as many people yeah. in the house will benefit from the $125. And then again, you get the, uh, the, the meal kit, which probably has a, at least $25 worth of product in there. So it's a good value. Oh yeah, and and all the great celebrities you got lined up too. So it's definitely yeah, worth the money. Very it's going to a great cause. So yeah, yep, absolutely. All right, and then the parade itself is going to be said uh, June thirteenth, I believe you said. Yes, June thirteenth on ABC Seven in New York from twelve to one, uh, twelve to two. I'm sorry. Uh, if you have any listeners that live in Puerto Rico, uh, it'll be on Telecinco um, okay. uh, from from twelve to two, and then we're. Um, you know, trying to see if other ABC stations and affiliates across the country will air, but but ABC7 will have a live stream on ABC7NY.com, so you can watch it from anywhere in the world through the live stream. Um, awesome. And we have lots of, um, you know, uh, really a good lineup. We're working on a really strong program that will obviously feature the cast of In the Heights, uh, but we are doing tributes to the legacy of Puerto Rican poetry. So if anybody didn't know, there's a very strong legacy of Puerto Rican poetry that has actually led to the whole New Yorkian poetry movement and helped, you know, bring in, you know, contribute to the whole art form of spoken word. Um, and, you know, this year with Amanda Gorman at the, uh, at the inauguration, I think America refound its love for poetry where, uh, you know, the Puerto Ricans are like, hey, we've been doing this for a long time. Yeah, he's like, hey. <laughs> we've been doing this forever. And, and, and ironically, using it for very similar purposes is what we saw in terms, I mean, yes, just for aesthetics and beauty and expression and what have you, but uh -huh. really using it to express identity, uh, to validate our Puerto Ricanness for all of those us that have had to move away from the island and still say, hey, we're very much Boricuas, right? Puerto Rican, um, to validate that identity and to, to also champion social justice for all those issues that I talked about earlier in terms of yeah. second class citizenship, you know, treatment and all this other stuff. Um, you know, poetry is one of the vehicles that we use to sort of, uh, you know, really champion the causes that we, we needed to do. So, so there's okay. a very long uh, legacy there. Um, we also are doing a tribute to San Juan, Puerto Rico is going to be celebrating its 500th anniversary, the 500th anniversary of its founding uh, um, this year. Right. Yeah, it's one of the oldest, if not the oldest city in the, the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, and not many people know that. So we're doing a whole tribute to the 500th anniversary and some of the, the uh, cultural aspects that came from that time, one of them being an, uh, a dance, a form of dance and music called La Danza, uh, Puerto Rican, yeah, Puerto Rican danza. Uh, and we're also doing a tribute to another national symbol, which is a horse, a breed of horse called a Paso Fino. And that's a gated horse that has a, just an exquisite gait. It's almost like the horse dances. And when, oh. you, when you ride the horse, the gait is such that 
you ride like this. Like you don't, there's no bouncing. There's nothing. It's, and it's a, a show horse. Um, it's uh -huh. absolutely gorgeous. And so, you know, a lot of Puerto Ricans, especially those that live here, we know about the Paso Finos. When we go down there, you know, you hear them coming because they, their gait is very distinct, but we don't know much about them. And so we thought uh -huh. that this year we could really take an opportunity to tell that story and talk about their history. Um, That's really cool. yeah. And, uh, you know, there'll be lots of other stuff. Music, we have some musical numbers and some dance numbers and things. So it should be a lot of fun. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for educating me and telling me about the history. But it's uh, some of it's very shocking, but I guess it's important to know, like, where we've come from and what we can move forward and making, a, you know, a better society. So thank yeah, you. Keep yeah, up the amazing I, work, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Just one last comment I mean, that, you know, yeah. everybody thinks of the parade. They think of two things. One is either this vibrant procession with lots of folks and music going up yeah. or the fact that it's going to interrupt all life in Manhattan, right? Because it's here, <laughs> you, it just takes over the city. And both of those are true, but really the, the beauty of it is the opportunities like this to uh -huh. sort of help inform and use the parade as a platform to, to not only talk about history and what have you, but, you know, really champion those causes and issues of importance to help, you know, move things forward. You know, Puerto Rico right now, I don't know if you know this, um, is there's, there's some, there's a really sad situation happening with domestic violence, particularly against women oh. and uh, a, a form of femicide that's happening um, in this year. Last year, very similar, um, a form of femicide, but with the trans community and, and, and trans oh. women. Uh, and um, it's a very sad situation, but we try to use the parade in, as a way to sort of champion causes like that. Um, and so it also has a social good component as well. Wow, yeah. heavy stuff. Uh, and hopefully things will get better. So Yeah, uh, together it does. But again, that's another yeah. thing. The parade is that bridge between the various... Exactly, because uh, otherwise, you could, if a lot of people know about it, there's no way you can try to fix it or change, you know? Right. So. That's right, that's right. So. Well, well, keep up the amazing work, like I said, and we'll talk down the road. And good luck to the gala coming up and the parade you itself, you know? I appreciate the support and uh, helping uh, spread the news.